It was a cloudless hot summer morning. Young Tom was ready to have his first day at the school. His mom made him ready for the school and gave him his favorite snacks for lunch. He was also supposed to carry his favorite colored water bottle to the school to avoid dehydration. Tom was the only child of his parents, so he always yearned for the friends. He was really happy to meet his class fellows and teachers. His teachers were looking emblematic of politeness today, but some of his class fellows were crying out badly. He was startled to see the welcoming teachers at one hand and crying young creation at the other hand, which had added to the effect of hot weather. He was a calm and composed boy by nature, but he had to make friends and his class fellows were busy in crying and were not in a mood of friendship with Tom. It was really like a delusion of dreams for Tom. So this calm boy started crying too. This was how the day ended and he returned home sadly. The next day, Tom was not ready to go to school, but his mother gave him a lesson of never giving up and always trying harder. The teachers were able to control the little emotions of new adventures by giving them candies and cards as welcome token. The children started enjoying the activities at the school. They had also started befriending each other. Tom also got two new friends named Henry and Paige. Now the little Tom was enlightened with joy. I wake up at 8 a.m. I stay in bed for around 10 minutes. I get up, brush my teeth and take a shower. I get ready and have my breakfast. Then I catch a bus to go to office. After reaching office, I check my emails, make some phone calls and report to my boss. Around 4 p.m., I take my afternoon tea while having some snacks. Around 6 p.m., I leave my office to go back to home. I reach home around 7.30 p.m. If I have any energies left, I prepare my dinner. If I am not feeling energetic enough, I order from outside. Then. I watch TV for some time, then I brush my teeth and go back to bed around 10 p.m. If you are an English language learner, it is very, very important for you to think in the same language. When you think in Hindi and then translate it in English, it becomes very difficult. Chances are 90% that you might make mistakes. If you want to learn any language, learn to think in that language. It is very important that you start making conversations with people. You have to be confident enough to be able to converse with the other people. It could be your friends, your family members, anyone. build your vocabulary. I cannot stress enough on how much good vocab is important. The better your vocab is, the better your English language stage is. Now, instead of using English to Hindi, Hindi to English dictionary, I suggest you to start using English to English dictionary. It will make you think in English. So to learn English, use English to English dictionary. Read in English. Try to read newspapers, comics, books in English. If you want to learn any language, be it English, Hindi, German, French, anything, 
you have to make your whole environment about that language. When you go out and you talk to your friends, try to talk in English. Even if you know that you're making mistakes, do not hesitate. I started with making small sentences. I used to make a lot of mistakes, but I made sure I'm still speaking in that language. Start watching small videos. The best thing is to watch cartoons in English. The language they use in cartoons is the perfect grammar because kids watch cartoons and they watch cartoons to learn. That's why the people who make cartoons, they make sure that they are using the perfect grammar and they are using the perfect language so that the kid can understand and learn. You see how much you learn from cartoons. You won't be able to learn that much from the movies. You have to know the basics of grammar. You have to know what is noun, what is adjective, what are pronouns, everything. If your basics are clear, the chances are very less that you will make any mistake. Once your writing, listening is done, try to read. Try to read articles, anything that interests you. But start it. Every year I go to Florida. I like to go to the beach. My favorite beach is called Emerson Beach. It is very long with soft sand and palm trees. It is very beautiful. I like to make sand castles and watch the sailboats go by. Sometimes there are dolphins and whales in the water. Every morning I look for shells in the sand. I found 20 big shells last year. I put them in a special place in my room. This year I want to learn to surf. It is hard to surf. My sister is a good surfer. She says that she can teach me. I hope I can do it. Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Elizabeth. I am 17 years old and a student in college. I go to college in London. My favorite courses are English, computer science, and history. English is my hardest course. My professors are very friendly and smart. It's my second year in college now. I live in a big house on Oxford Street. It's near the college campus. I share my room with three other students. Their names are Emma, Anna, and Amelia. We help each other with homework. On the weekends, we play basketball together. Do you know the origin of water? Water falls from the sky when it rains. We refer to this as precipitation. Streams are filled with rainwater. Rivers receive stream water. Water from rivers enters the seas and oceans. The ocean water warms up with the sun. Some water rises to the sky. This is called evaporation. Clouds are created by water in the sky. Then it started to rain again. This is called the water cycle.
We're lucky to have water in our homes. About one billion people don't have clean water in their homes. Most of the water we use comes from rivers and reservoirs. Clean water goes through pipes to our homes. Water is all around us. We have liquid water in rivers and oceans. We have frozen water in ice and glaciers, and we have water vapor in clouds and steam. Water is very important. About 70% of Earth is covered with water. Most of the water is in the oceans. There are five oceans, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Southern Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. The largest ocean is the Pacific Ocean. It's 156 million square kilometers. It's about 15 times bigger than the USA. Sarah was hungry. She walked to the kitchen. She got out some eggs. She took out some oil. She placed a frying pan on the stove. Next, she turned on the heat. She poured the oil into the pan. She cracked the eggs into a bowl. She stirred the eggs. Then she poured them into the hot frying pan. She waited while the eggs cooked. They cooked for two minutes. She heard them cooking. They popped into the oil. Sarah put the eggs on a plate. She placed the plate on the dining room table. Sarah loved looking at his eggs. They looked pretty on the white plate. She sat down in the large wooden chair. She thought about the day ahead. She ate the eggs with a spoon. They were good. She washed the plate with dishwashing soap. Then she washed the pan. Finally, she wiped down the table. Next, Sarah watched TV for a while. Mr. and Mrs. Jack have one son and one daughter. The son's name is James. The daughter's name is Elena. The Jack live in a house. They have a living room. They watch TV in the living room. The mother cooks food in the kitchen. They eat in the dining room. The house has two bedrooms. They sleep in the bedrooms. They keep their clothes in the closet. There is one bathroom. They brush their teeth in the bathroom. The house has a garden. James and Elena play in the garden. They have a cat. James and Elena like to play with the cat. I was only seven years old when my dad was working with lions, elephants, and chickens. Therefore, I always had animals around me. When I was 13, I was already taking care of animals and raising chickens, leopards, cats, 
and other animals. At 16, I began working professionally with elephants. I did that for about seven years and then gave it up. I have been working in the construction business since then. I just returned from the greatest summer vacation. It was so fantastic, I never wanted it to end. I spent 15 days in Paris, France. My best friends, Daniel and Thomas, went with me. We had a beautiful hotel room, and it wasn't even expensive. We had a balcony with a wonderful view. We visited many famous tourist places. My favorite was the Louvre, a well-known museum. I was always interested in art, so that was a special treat for me. The museum is so huge, you could spend weeks there. Daniel got tired walking around the museum and said, Enough. I need to take a break and rest. We took lots of breaks and sat in cafes along the River Seine. The French food we ate was delicious. Daniel's favorite part of the vacation was the hotel breakfast. He said he would be happy if he could eat bread rolls like those forever. We had so much fun that we're already talking about our next vacation. My family lives in a small house. It's simple but pretty. It has a large garden. I like to work in the garden, but my sister hates to work in the garden. She prefers to read. She reads in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. I give all of the vegetables to mom and dad. They like to cook in our small kitchen. I eat any vegetable, but my sister eats only a few. My family always eats breakfast and dinner together. We talk. We laugh. Then my sister washes the dishes. There are seven days of the week or uniquely named 24-hour periods designed to provide scheduling context and make time more easily measurable. Each of these days is identifiable by specific plans, moods, and tones. Monday is viewed by many to be the worst day of the week as it marks the return to work following the weekend when most full-time employees are given two days off. Most students attend school in the morning and return home in the afternoon, usually from about 8 until 3 or 7 until 2, and most workers go to work in the morning and return home in the evening. Tuesday is the second day of the week and is in many ways similar to Monday. Not a whole lot of changes, schedule-wise, between Tuesday and Monday, most individuals go to school or work and return home to watch television, play video games, make plans with friends, spend time with family, read, or engage in a similar leisure-related activity. Wednesday is the third day of the week and serves as the middle of the work week. Some individuals refer to Wednesday as hump day, as once its work day is complete, employees will have passed the work week hump 
and will be on the downturn, as only two days on the job will remain in the week. Thursday is the fourth day of the week and is viewed favorably by many as it's rather close to the end of the work week. Friday is the fifth day of the week and marks the end of the work week and school week for the vast majority of employees and students. By Friday evening, most workers cannot wait to leave and go home as they won't have to report back to work until Monday. Saturday is perhaps the most highly regarded day of the week. Because Sunday follows it, everyone is free to stay out until late at night, having fun with plans or other leisure-related activities. Saturday is generally thought of as a day to partake in hobbies that couldn't otherwise be enjoyed during the regular week. Sunday is the final day of the week and is used by most as a day of rest. Fewer late-night plans are made on Sundays compared to Saturdays as most individuals have to wake up for work or school on Monday morning.